Hi, I'm Rob Thorne, and this is the Profile Series. I'm host of today's program, a movie in the making, A Year by the Sea. I'm with Cape author Joan Anderson. Joan, welcome. Thank you. I'm also here with Alexander Jenko, screenwriter of, of Year by the Sea, a movie in development based on three of Joan's New York Times best-selling books. And, and Zandy, welcome. Yeah, they are. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you both for joining me today. A Year by the Sea was your first memoir, Joan, after spending a year alone on Cape Cod. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I ran away from home. <laughs> That's the most important thing to know. And you go somewhere safe, and Cape Cod is a very safe place. So I came here to our little cottage. I was at, the, at a crossroads in my life. I didn't know what I was going to do next or if I was going to do anything next. And I got all the answers that I needed spending a year here by myself. It's fantastic. You've sold hundreds of thousands of copies worldwide, and, and soon A Year by the Sea will be republished by Barnes & Noble after more than 10 years. Isn't that exciting? Extremely. And I have no idea why. The writing is pretty good. I wrote uh, the book, ten, I rewrote it 10 times. It was rejected 37, so by the time it finally got published, it was pretty decent. And it has a universal message, and that universal message is, who am I beyond the roles that I play? Everybody wants to know, after they've been a a husband, a wife, a, a daughter, a best friend, a mother, any of those roles. Is there anything left for me to do? Is there any purpose that I have that I still haven't uncovered? And so that's why I think the book has been so important to people worldwide. China, Israel, um, Taiwan, Australia, and all these countries and people are picking up this book because they want answers and they want to see somebody who actually took her life in her own hands to get the answer. I think you just answered my next question, which was what makes this story so timely? And essentially, uh, the story's timeless, correct? It is timeless, and, and the, what I'm so excited about in having a film with this amazing producer here, Alexander Jenko, is that it, 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 it's going to go to a, a, lo, a larger audience. We really want, we were plateaued because so many people read. Mm -hmm. But now we need a larger audience so that people can see and know that they too can change, that their life really has. Well, the line in the book is, I am as unfinished as the shoreline along the beach, meant to transcend myself again and again. And the other line that's really terrific in the book is, the habit of deference can grow like a cancer on the soul of a person until what she or he becomes is out of their hands. So my whole message is don't defer. Seize your life, seize the day, carpe diem. And Alexander came along and said, I like this message. And it's taken him four years to actually bring it to the screen. I'm so grateful. <laughs> I believe, Alexander, you've put together a teaser reel that introduces the movie. We have. Let's take a look. It appeared on the kitchen counter and was just sitting there. And was just sitting there. And I picked it up. I was boiling water for tea. And I read the first sentence, was hooked, and didn't put it down. She put into words what I had felt for a very long time. It's not just a, one woman's story. It's women's stories, you know, even though it's one woman telling her story. I mean, we all are unfinished, and we transcend ourselves until we die. But we need food. We need nourishment, and part of that comes restoration. from... I call it restoration. Restoration, Restoration. Yeah. I know you're watching Joan Anderson in the same way that I did the first time I saw it. I go, yeah, great. Wouldn't I love to take a year off? That's where this book began, when you wrote A Year by the Sea. What was that book about? That book was Running Away from Home. Her book tells the story of how she discovered who she really is, and you are going to love it. I think it speaks to the heart of so many women who lack the courage to do what she did. I was amazed. It was like she was in my head. I was totally hooked. Because I think it's not something that's exclusive to women. It's the type of story that people can relate to. Her message resonates with every age. And I think she basically speaks to a whole universal audience of women and, and men as well. She touches the soul, is what I'm saying. She touches the soul. Joan inspires me, she inspires all of us, and I know she'll inspire men and women out there in the world. They speak to you, they grab you. 
I think it would be a fabulous movie. I just think this is going to be a fabulous, fabulous movie. I mean, it's a huge journey that you've Oh, had. we want to take that journey because it is time for us to evoke our passion, to find a cause, to find our gift, and to make the difference. We're all unique human beings. She taught me to uh, embrace adventure and grab it by the tail and run with it. And if somebody can get that from the movie, it's just such a wonderful gift. For the book to progress, into a film is for women to see that they're not finished and that they're only just beginning. And that's the hopeful thing about this movement. Well, that was, that was fantastic. How long have you been working on this film? Uh, we've been in development for a couple years, <laughs> four years, maybe. Fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> it's been in process. Uh, but most recently, we brought the screenplay to the Cape, and we hosted a reading for, uh, I think we had 130 we did. fans uh, come out. It was held on April 1st, and we even had some folks drive out from Michigan and New Jersey, and we basically tested the material, uh, got to see how it, how it played in front of an audience, and did some feedback focus group, so we were able to sort of uh, nip and tuck and tweak a few things. And now we've launched a Kickstarter campaign to continue the ongoing development funding and to entice our investors who are sort of beginning to circle. It's kind of proof of concept. Okay. One thing that jumps out for me is, is the courage that you have to put that out there. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of stories out there that people just like yourself, um, but for whatever reason they can't maybe reach down inside and find that, that your courage, Robin's courage as well, is really what comes out to put that story forth and, well, and have be open to the, to the world. My husband said, if people do, do not begin to tell the truth, the paradigm will never shift. And what's very interesting about the New York Times bestseller list, which is what I, the first book was on for 32 weeks, is that there are very few women on the list because it's hard for women to tell the truth and not lose everything. But I did most of the truth. <laughs> there was a little editing. I just tried to stay with a universal message. And um, it's just worked out really well. I, I think in New England, it has um, been on the Barnes & Noble's best memoir list for seven years. I mean, this is not to brag about. This is to talk about there's a message. There's a movement happening. There are people wondering what's next. And the books and my friend here, Alexander, are going to be able to get that message out. Yeah, what I had read that, uh, and what I had seen is it just struck a chord with so many people, which is, is the folks going through the same exact thing that you had, had gone through, um, as we said, and just had never put that story out there or never related to anybody that had the similar story. You know, I think that we are, we are in such a fast-paced society and moving so much that we really have very little time to actually contemplate who we are and what really matters. And as you were saying earlier today, you need to go out in your boat here on Cape Cod and put on some music or not, drift with the waves and just think. You know, the unexamined life is the wasted life. And I've done a lot of the examining for the people in these books so that they too are inspired to examine their life and not waste it. I think it's the emotional honesty of the story. I agree. It is. Um, I am who I am. People, I, I was not brave. Somebody who's had cancer and come back from that is brave. Somebody who's suffered great loss is brave. I was desperate. But if you're desperate, then why not stop and really do something about your de desperation and do it as honestly as possible? So my, what my task was once the book came out and I started talking to people and speaking to women's groups, et cetera, is to make sure that I didn't change that what I learned by a, year, by a year on the beach on Cape Cod kept me solid and straight, forward, and real. There's so much unreal, there's so much illusion, and I'm into real. Perfect, it really comes through. Well, and Alexander's script is just so amazing because he's taken so much from the book. He isn't trying to um, go with the Hollywood uh, 
No, not at all. No. I mean, we, we've, we've actually, we've tried to keep it true to the Cape. The Cape itself is a character. The nature, the seashore, the dunes, and then the people, the locals. Yeah. And so we, a lot of the characters are the, the, the fishermen, you know, the, the, the local um, uh, cocktail waitress. Or, and it's so interesting that he has brought out these characters who are all seeking something for themselves be they 30 years old or 50 years old or 70 years old. And it's so exciting to see this in the script, that you're, it's, you're never too late. My mentor, Joan Erickson, whom I met on a jetty in Harwichport, uh, she was very much uh, uh, an unknown person, and then she became known when she was 60, 65. And I love to tell that story because it never is over until it's over. Again, we are unfinished. You talk about the... Uh... Alexander, you brought up the Cape, and the Cape is, you know, for those of us that live here year-round, we, we know the beauty and the, the quiet of the Cape. I imagine maybe you could talk a little bit about that. It, to me, it almost seems like the Cape is a character in and of itself in, in, the, in the book. It seems to fit perfectly with what Joan's message is there. Very much so. I mean, I, it was interesting because the, the first time I actually drove out to the Cape to, to meet Joan, uh, <laughs> it, was so it, much fun. it reminded me, because I, I grew up on the Monterey Peninsula, and the, the evergreens, you know, there's deciduous, but there's also evergreens in the pines. And that's what I noticed about the Cape, is that there's a lot of pine mm. as well. Scrub pine. It's scrub pine. Which is what we're doing, scrubbing around. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it feels, it's, it's very grounded, mm. it's very organic. The, I think the sand, and every time I come out here, I, you gotta go to the beach, you gotta take off your shoes, mm. you gotta walk with your bare feet on the sand. Yeah. Reminds me of that great scene in the, um, uh, wasn't it Pretty Woman where, where she, Julia Roberts makes uh, Richard Gere take off his shoes mm -hmm. and walk, you know, feel his toes on the grass. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's part of what it is about feeling our lives again, right? Going into that intuitive place, going into that sensual place or sens sensory place. Mm -hmm. Being able to, and the cape is a character. It's about smelling it, tasting it, you know, breathing it, hearing it, seeing it. And we get so encapsulated in our lives, driving around in these cars, cars and these you know shells, and we, we we miss out on this opportunity to to see and to hear and to touch. So every time I tried to um, work on a scene, I tried to evoke that opportunity for the characters. We have this uh, you know the fisherman's wife Judy, right, mm -hmm. the, who's the runner. You know she's constantly going out. I mean, that says something a lot about her character, but she's also taking us, the audience, showing us visually the landscape of the Cape. So we're constantly getting to see not just, you know, coastal or seaside, but we're getting to see Lover's Lane, we're getting to see the, the backcountry roads, and we're getting to see sort of the essence of what this place is as kind of a womb, I feel like. It is a womb, and, and I call myself, people will say, but well, what are you doing there this year, the year I was here alone? And I couldn't come up with an answer until I realized that I'm becoming a scholar of self and soul. And that does not come from a book. That comes from experiencing this landscape for me. Absolutely. It's, it's almost and, decompression. It's, it's, it's coming down. And the metaphors for your life that can be found on the Cape in dune grass, in molting lobsters, in, in you know, the, the, the shoreline, in the tides. We called the book originally Ebb Tide because I was circular. I didn't know where I was going to go in my life. And as I moved on from, the, from nothing to something, I came to realize that I had been ripped apart, riptide. I had to dig deep down into the sand at, at low tide to come to my high tide, which is where I am now. It's just fun that you brought that up because like Vivaldi's Four Seasons, yes. the film itself is structured in its act structure with the tides. Exactly, maybe we should use that as a background music. <laughs> we could, we, we could. could, yeah, absolutely. But it, it, it's, that's the whole nature of it is, life is a cycle. When you were talking about the dune grass, it uh, immediately made me think of the scene where we have that one blade of dune grass mm -hmm. that in the wind, have you ever seen that it does a full circle and it, and it draws this circle around it on the sand? Yes, yes. And yeah. it's kind of this, it's this continuum of, of, of life and that it really does, it comes around if we allow it to and we give it the freedom to do so. And I like to say that one stalk of mature dune grass has something like a mile root underneath. 
holding the, the, the dune together. And I see that stock as a woman yeah. who holds families and communities and children and churches and all kinds of things together. And everything that she does is unseen. So I try to build up the woman in my book and say, and see yourself, know that you are amazing. Um, for those that don't know, Alexander, could you explain what Kickstarter is? Yes. Please. Uh, it's a crowdfunding website. Okay. And it was initially started for um, technology and art projects. And then a couple of filmmakers got on board. Uh, Spike Lee did one. Uh, Zach Braff did a film called Wish I Were Here. And the television producers of Veronica Mars did a film. And that sort of toppled over the apple cart because these were uh, films, those, th those three examples were films kind of like ours where the studios couldn't see past the demographic. They couldn't see past the you know, international foreign pre-sales merchandising. We make summer blockbuster popcorn films for teenage boys. Mm -hmm. And that's not what this is. And so it enables us to put our project on, talk a little bit about it, and basically reach our demographic we know we're the baby boomers predominantly. We know that we're the women predominantly. And here's a little f funny data. The uh, Bechtel test, it came out, I think, two weeks ago. And there's actually three components of the Bechtel test. The first question is, does the movie have female characters who have names? That means that they're not just a stripper or a waitress or some kind of ancillary And that character. would be me. <laughs> I have a name. So I'm we, Joan Anderson. We have named characters. And then the second question is, do those named characters actually have a conversation in the film? And that would be me and Joan Erickson, my very famous mentor. And if those two characters are having that conversation, is it about anything other than a man? And that's what we talked about, Joan Erickson. I talked about life and changing one's life and going through your life cycles and getting stronger and stronger. So we've met all three Bechtel tests. tests. Yeah. yeah, and once you can check off all three of those boxes, mm. the films are actually 37% more profitable ROI than male-centric movies. So Isn't he amazing? He we're, is. We're outside so the model of Hollywood, but we know we have a film that has an audience. You have a video for that, I believe. We do. It's another exciting uh, teaser sort of sizzle reel. Very good. Let, let's check that out. All right. Da 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 da. Where's the music? Little, 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 little. Come on. I'm Alexander Janko, screenwriter of A Year by the Sea, based on three New York Times bestselling memoirs. And I'm Joan Anderson, author of those three books. We're here on Kickstarter to raise development funds for a universal story. A Year by the Sea is a story of a woman, me, who ran away from home to find out who she was beyond the roles that she played. It's also about friendship. And trust. A sexy fisherman. Taking risks. Swimming with the seals. Sponsoring yourself. An adventure to Dune Shack. Knowing that joy is a duty. Mm, it's about becoming. That's it. You got it. Basically, we're all as unfinished as the shoreline. Men and women. Just like you and me. Mm. And that's why we're here. Because every community everywhere has people of all walks of life, all of whom are asking the same question. What am I meant to be doing? Where is my purpose? And this film is about the purpose. You see, Joan's books grew organically, and our movie can too, with your help. The universal truth is there in the book, but it could be so much larger, it could reach so many more people in a film. So please join us in our journey to bring Joan's amazing books to the big screen. Even one dollar will show investors there's an audience for our film and help us make waves in Hollywood. Because everyone is searching for self. It looks like you two had fun. Oh, we've had. Well, when he came the first time, I took him around to show him all my haunts. And that was just a riot. That was just wonderful. We ended up having lobster rolls on a beach in Brewster. We did. And, you know, it's, it's all about chemistry. I mean, he believes he, he's got a lot of feminine in him. I like that. <laughs> and he, he found this book on, on his kitchen table, as, as you saw in the teaser. And he, he was just, it just enveloped him. And he has the passion for it. And of course, as you know, only if you only have people behind it that have passion, will you have a good project. So it's been watching, it's been really fun watching him grow and develop with the passion. 
and grow himself absolutely into and, a new person and what's been kind of exciting this week because uh, it's been Memorial Day weekend is we spend a lot of time in the Cape meeting a lot of the people local people and we actually created these postcards to talk about the Kickstarter campaign because we want to engage the local community to the best of our ability and so I spent time with my associate producer walking up and down the streets even in Chatham and going into the stores and engaging and talking with people and what's incredible is you, you go into these places, you, you mention, you introduce yourself, you say, hi, I'm Alexander Janko, I'm a screenwriter, producer of Year by the Sea, we're making this movie based on John Anderson's books, and everybody goes, oh, wow, <laughs> you know, I loved that book, I had no idea. And you start talking to them, start engaging them, and, and they get excited about the idea of being able to participate, being a part of it. I think that's the beauty of Kickstarter today, is a lot of people would like to be able to participate, but they don't know how. And now we have you know, a portal, an opportunity, a venue in which they can go and say, hey, you know what, I want to be a part of this. I want to make a difference. I want to see it come to life on the big screen. And so by going to Kickstarter, they can make a pledge. It's a, it's a open, it can be a dollar, it can go all the way up to $10,000. But it enables them to say, yes, I want to support this. I'm behind it. I believe it, exactly. And what's exciting about that is when you have larger film financiers and you have talent, you know, we've got the screenplay out to a lot of actors, some of the marquee actors. They and their agents, everybody's looking to see what's the groundswell. You know, yes, we know that Joan's books were phenomenally successful. Yes, we know there's an audience out there that loved the, you know, the books. Will they want to see the movie? Will they want to see it made? Will they come out to the theaters? And so when you can take something like our Facebook page and show, look, we have nearly 2,000 fans now. You can take our Kickstarter campaign, which has been running for just one week, and we've raised nearly 50% of our goal. They say, they go, wow, okay, people are really behind this. People really want to see this. Now we're at the point where we need participation. Like any type of funding, organizational um, campaign, you want to see numbers. I've always said we'd rather have 50,000 fans at $1 than one person at $50,000. Because it's just, it's, it's, that, it's, it's the groundswell. It's the prairie fire, as you like to always say. It's that intrinsic support of the community and the people. Well, it's, it's word of mouth. I mean, my book's only sold because of word of mouth. Mm -hmm. The first book, they put no money into the publicity of it. And they called it a chick flick, or chick book. <laughs> and the men that were in charge of Doubleday did nothing to promote it. And it sold out in like two weeks, just like this Kickstarter campaign. And they were forced to print 5,000 more books. I mean, they were printing in tiny, tiny little increments because they just didn't believe in it like he does. So it's a whole nother, it's very exciting. Those folks, they, how do they pledge money? What can they do? They go to the Kickstarter campaign. They're going to receive awards. Maybe you could explain that. Yes, yeah, so we, we, we decided to do something a little different than everybody else. Um, I wanted these rewards to be exciting, different, quality, you know, something that would have a little pizzazz. So I engaged a New York fashion designer by the name of Kenny Bonavitacola. Mm -hmm. And he's worked with a lot of top tier uh, fashion houses. And his most recent gig was, was with uh, Tadashi Soji. And this guy has created amazing stuff. You know, we've got the t-shirts, we've got the hats, but we've got beach towels, we've got beach bags, we've got um, sarongs. We've, we've actually, we, we had, but it's gone because somebody already pledged it. We, we actually auctioned off the jacket of ties um, that Erickson, the character, my, my mentor uh, wore. We wears in the movie. So we've got really, really nice stuff, but we also have experiences. Um, people can go and uh, bid to spend a day on the Cape with Joan, going to, you know, basically following the track of her book and her year by the sea. We've got a local photographer, uh, John Vaughn, is going to um, offer to take people exploring the Cape on how he shoots nature photography. They'll, they can go to a studio, learn his process, actually um, engage in that if they want. Kenny has offered to design a one-of-a-kind outfit for a, somebody who wants to have a, a custom couture you know, ensemble piece. Um, we've off, we're offering, uh, it's called Cast Your Line. If somebody actually wants to be in the movie, they can pledge and be a part and have a role 
on, you know, on film. Perfect, so there's various tiers yes. involved. Yes. And I understand um, you have a tier yourself. I do. Yeah. Um, for me, it's, I'm calling it finding the beat. And I've discovered over the years of working on film, because I started out in post-production as a composer, um, that there's something amazing about finding the tempo mm. of a scene. Because you write with a certain beat, and then the actors perform with a certain beat, and the editors cut with a certain beat. And when you get to post-production and music, you actually are trying to follow that, that beat. So I'm calling it finding the beat. Somebody can come out, uh, partake in the recording sessions, conduct the orchestra, um, basically experience the rush of working with live musicians. So it's, it's, it's kind of exciting. Now, you, would, you were also um, very heavily involved in, please uh, correct me, with uh, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Yes, that was <laughs> that was sort of the the what they call the overnight success that took a decade. Um, <laughs> I'd worked on 65 motion pictures up until that point, and had done a lot of big films. And then this little film, kind of like our film, a little film, uh, it was an opportunity for me, and I did it. Nobody thought that Big Fat Greek Wedding would become the movie that it did. Um, ironically, it's about the same budget that we are, and when that went viral and it became a word of mouth campaign and everybody started talking about the film and wanting their friends to go see it with them, it blew up. And it's now the highest grossing, most successful comedy of, in history, romantic comedy in history. Perfect. Why, why do we need, maybe you could talk a little bit about why, why do we need Kickstarter? What, what is it about Kickstarter? It, it's interesting. We shopped the project around Hollywood and we'd gotten incredibly positive response on the material. Everybody was excited about the books, everybody was excited about the script, and actors are responding to the, to the characters and to the screenplay. The challenge has been financiers, mm -hmm. and they've got their heads stuck in a you know, sort of specific model, specific financing trench, and I just, I, I reached the point where you, know, you knock on so many doors and they say, well, it's great, it's great, it's too small, it's too small, it's great, it's great, it's great, it's too small, it's too small. And I just decided, why wait? You know, let's, let's go to our audience, let's go to the people and the only way I can imagine doing that after Zach Braff was successful and Veronica Mars were successful is let's put it up on Kickstarter. We are gonna, we're trying to do something that nobody's done because our demographic, baby boomers, predominantly women, are not the Kickstarter demographic. Sure. Kickstarter's predominantly 25 to 35 year old men. But I am absolutely convinced once our audience hears about this, knows about it, they will go to Kickstarter. They will make their pledges. Well, they are going. And, they, and we've proven and this. In one week, we've met ha ha half of our goal. So we've made $25,000 and our goal is 50. Now, can folk, folks can send a check if yes. they want, oh, right? Yes, they can. Okay. We, we, we've created um, uh, an organization called Sealway. And it enables people, if they're not comfortable with Kickstarter, if they're not comfortable with the computer, if they want to do it more organically through snail mail, um, they can write out a check to Sealway. And we and have it's the box 1314 Harwich 02645. Very good. Um, Year by the Sea took place on Cape Cod. Will it be filmed here? Mm. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> this is, you cannot make a Year by the Sea without making it here and making it about the Cape National Seashore. And how could we possibly have the dune shack seen if we weren't out in one of those raunchy, wonderful dune shacks? Absolutely. When, when do you anticipate filming will begin? Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. But really, we're definitely optimistic. Fall, 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 this fall, October, we'll begin to uh, principal photography. October 2014. October 2014. Mm -hmm. Very good. Excellent. Well, thank you both for being here today. Do you want to be in the film? Why not? Sure. <laughs> if, there's a, uh, if there's a part there, I'd be happy to do it. Sure. For those of you at home, it sounds like you can support a local author in the local economy by visiting www.kickstarter.com and searching for a year by the sea. And it's going to be up until June 20th, correct? Mm -hmm. I believe. Hopefully, we'll see some film crews around here after the season. Best luck to both of you and everybody else involved. And, and thanks very much for coming on and sharing your story. Thanks a lot, Rob. Thank you, Rob.